one. I'm really happy to uh, introduce Marian. I think the majority of the people here do know Marian. If you don't, uh, she's an associate professor at KU Leuven, uh, one of the uh, key leaders in Europe working on tiny ML. Uh, Marian was a recipient of the prestigious CRC award back in, I believe, 2013. Marian, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> And uh, Marian will give us uh, an overview of uh, the ERC project and some of the successful out outcomes that came out of it, and also share her thoughts about this uh, as well. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, it should be later than 2013 because my ERC project is still running. I think 20. That is 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's almost next year, it will be over. So indeed, uh, my name is Marianne Verelst. I was asked to give a brief um, discussion of a successful European project in the context of TinyML. Um, maybe first very quickly introduce myself for the people that don't know me. So um, I'm a professor at KU Leuven in Belgium where I do research on embedded machine learning and especially on making it very energy efficient. Eh? So really a match with the TinyML. And my expertise here is on chip design, so processor design. We make custom AI processors and also on co-optimizing the hardware, the algorithms and the, the scheduling, basically. On the right, you see my team, at least that's how we used to look two years ago. And today we look like this, but it's gonna change again. Now, what's the project I wanna talk about? It's an ERC project as of funded by the European Research Council. It is an ERC starting grant, which uh, means that I got it in the beginning of my career, which um, and the ERC projects typically fund a high risk, high gain research. There are individual grants given to individual PIs for a project that is uh, of a duration of five years and for a starting grant that can up to 1.5 million euros. So of course, for a starting PI, this is a very big um, project and it really opens a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors. I'm very grateful I got this, and I got this with the project called ReSense, which stands for Resource Efficient Sensing. Six years ago, TinyML, no one was talking about TinyML, but yet it was already ambitioning this. Because what I do in this project is I make um, sensing knobs that are smart, or sensor nodes that are smart enough that they can tune themselves. So they can decide based on what's going on around them how important their sensory information is at the moment, whether this is a microphone, an accelerometer, or a camera, they can decide whether there is a lot of information to gather and whether the task that they're currently performing requires this information or not. And based on this, they adapt the sensor inputs, uh, the ADCs, the tags, the sampling rates, the precisions, and they adapt their own processing to process the, the necessary information as efficiently as possible. So these self-tunable sensor systems require some hardware implementation, but they also rely on embedded machine learning because the system has to be intelligent enough to know what to turn on and turn off. And for that, we use probabilistic AI. So not the neural networks we hear a lot about nowadays, that we also use them, but we combine that with probabilistic machine learning, such as Bayesian networks, to reason about what's currently going on. And in that context, we also made a processor chip um, which cannot handle neural networks. And these are other chips in my lab, but this specific one is really optimized to um, process probabilistic machine learning models and do inference with them. And they have very different workloads than these nice regular neural networks. So there's new challenges. And this ERC project really allowed us to uh, dig into this uh, from the bottom up and come with this new class of processors. The question that was asked to me was especially, okay, how does this project lead to success? Uh, what, what's going on afterwards? And of course, the, the, the question is then, what is success? For me, the most important success is that such a project where you can really um, think bold and be ambitious, go for high risk, allows you to collaborate with people that otherwise you wouldn't collaborate with. And for me, it really, I'm traditionally a circuits person, chip design person. It allowed me to really make that link with the people from CS departments, computer science, people that do the ML algorithms and make sure we have this tight hardware algorithm co-optimization. Of course, if you ask an academic what is success, many of them will also say, 
well, it is doing a lot of good publications and so on. I'm not that much a believer in, or I don't find it that important, but I must say that my ERC helped. Eh? You see here my Google Scholar Citation Index, where my ERC started here, and you see nicely it kind of blew up after my ERC project. You see it starts to level up a bit now, so it's time for me to apply for my second ERC. Now, another kind of showing of the success and, and this, especially this collaboration between fields is that I was able with the results of this project to publish both at ISSCC, which for the circuits people, the chip people is considered as the top venue, top conference in the field, but also at NURIPS, which for the algorithmic people is supposed to be the top conference in their field. And normally circuits people don't go to NURIPS and NURIPS people don't go to ISSCC. But we were able to really link these two domains. And for me, that is a big success of the project. And then finally, I think uh, success of a project should be measured by how many uh, more maturing projects can come afterwards where these bold high-risk ERC IDs can go closer and closer to markets. And in this case, this is first with national funding or more traditional EU funding schemes, eh, the IP projects and so on. And then with bilateral industrial projects where the information and the technologies are really transferred to industry. And my ERC project has led to all of them. And you can say, but yeah, your project is not over yet. It will finish one year or, or nine months from now. So this should come later, but I don't think so. At ERC projects kind of spin out results along their, their lifetime. You shouldn't see a project as I mean, successive things. Within the ERC, there is many little ideas and they spin out to another EU project, to some bilateral collaborations. And all of that is currently running in my lab where I work with multiple companies uh, directly bilaterally where we have other um, non-ERC projects at the national and EU level already going on as well. And if I can give some ad advice or, or some big thank you note to the ERC and the EU funding people. This ERC is really important. It is a necessary seed funding that allows you to do something crazy that then can go into the more mature path. So I think that is very important for me. And some advice to my, my colleagues eh, is that, academic colleagues, is that is, it is great to try to keep your, what I call the funding pipeline filled. And I mean, you do some fundamental, crazy, far-fetched things. And in parallel, you have some more maturing things and some more, maybe a bit boring, industrial tech transfer things. And if you can nicely pipeline them and stagger them, you kind of have this continuous cycle of new ideas and tech spin-outs. Voila, that's a bit what I wanted to say about the project, but I'm open for all questions or comments. Thank you so much, Marianne. I think we have time for people if they want to ask uh, comments or questions. Uh, uh, please sir, use a hand so that I can... Uh, I'm not sure if I see any hands. Uh, let me bring up the list of participants. Uh, well, uh, let me first of all say congratulations. Obviously, knowing uh, the competitiveness and the level of the ERCs, uh, uh, this is indeed the pinnacle of um, uh, reaching out and uh, understanding basic things and understanding uh, to do how to do research, especially if you're a young academic. Uh, but I, uh, one of the most important outcomes that, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, Marian, and if it's something that you can share with us, um, did having an ERC grant uh, bring you in uh, uh, good standing with the industry to secure further collaborations or you still had to go to the industry and present your ideas and see whether the industry would be interested in adopting them mm -hmm. or collaborate with you? That's a good question. Um, I don't think the industry cares or even knows much about ERC. The industry doesn't really know many of these fundamental, or maybe some European industry does, but even then I don't think many of them really know this scheme. I think it's more an indirect impact. Because I have the ERC, I could build my group, I could invest in some more fundamental longer term innovations, and this then gets picked up in conferences, and there you get the visibility 
of the industry. And then once they start coming, I guess they keep coming. So I don't think it's they, I don't think I have the collaboration because of the ERC label, but definitely the ERC enabled it. Okay. Thanks, Maria. Um, any other questions or anybody that would like to step in and uh, join the discussion, please either raise your hand. Oh, I see Carlo. Carlo, go ahead. Uh, sorry, just disabled the camera. But a uh, question from Marian, as we have uh, some people from the commission here. Uh, what's your experience with the process of getting through and uh, being an ERC accepted and then reporting about it? How do you find it? Um, I have to say that the application procedure is extremely time consuming and energy consuming. I mean, you need a really good idea on which you work very, very long and go to all these phases. But I think it's good because, oh, by the way, I didn't get it for the first time. I applied a couple of times. Uh, I applied once, I didn't get to the first round. I completely rewrote my IDs. I, I took two years to do, or one and a half year to do that. I applied again, I got to the second round, but I didn't get it. And then I applied a third time. But every time I worked on the idea, I improved it. I talked to people, I networked, I brainstormed. And I think the it was a lot of investment, but my project got much better. So you invest a lot of time. But once you have the project, it's very easy and smooth. There is very minimal reporting. You get the trust from the commission that once you have gone through this competitive process, you're doing good things with the money. Uh, I think once you have it, it's, it's, it's a dream, but to get there, you have to be willing to spend a lot of time. And, and especially my recommendation there is talking to other people, brainstorming, don't stay with your ideas in your own head to make them better and better and better. And don't give up after one try. Okay, thanks for the lesson learned. It's uh, I can confirm them from my institution. Colleagues have the, had the, exactly the same experience. Yeah. Same here, yeah. <laughs> any other um, any other insight or anybody would like to jump in? I don't see anything. So maybe okay. Thank Marianne, you. thank you so much. I want to thank our sponsors that made this event possible. Um, so the premier sponsors, Newton, working on automated TinyML. If you were there a few days ago, they had a keynote explaining what they're doing. Executive sponsors are ARM, um, um, Edge Impulse as well, um, and Qualcomm, um, Sentient, and then our platinum sponsors. We have Infineon, and Reality AI. Gold sponsors are Latent AI, SenseML, and our silver sponsors are Emza, Greenwaves, HOTG, Imagimob, Kiso, Seed, and ST. And with that, I thank you very much for staying on till the very last end, um, the last day of the, and the last session of the last day. And um, with that, I think we can close the, the forum for uh, this year. Thank you everybody for contributing. Thank you, Andreas, for uh, also moderating this session.